Hi there, I'm David. And I'm Con, and we're back again today, David, to discuss something that's near and dear to your heart. It is indeed. Look, I've just recently got the uh, much-talked-about, much-anticipated Duclos uh, E-mount to FZ converter plate here. So, uh, before we go any further, what lens have you got that, that on? That is the, uh, once again, much talked about uh, the Fujinon, the MK series. This is the, the wide angle version. The 18 to 55 That's mil. That's the one, yeah. yeah. So, why did you need an adapter to go on that lens? Well, basically, this is a game changer because now I can get this lens mm. onto the F5. Oh, the F5 being an FZ mount? FZ mount, yep. uh, which traditionally has meant, you know, all these adapters or PL mm. or whatever. but. The essence of this talk is about weight reduction mm -hmm. and center of gravity and the, the camera person's basic comfort factor throughout the shoot. Right, because a lot of people are using their Canons or uh, Fujinon Cabrios, which are bigger, heavier lenses, they great lenses. Beautiful lens. But the weight is an issue when you're doing maybe a reality show with that thing on your shoulder all day. Long haul. and and. This uh, is about two kilograms lighter than one of those. And I know, uh, you know, it doesn't have a servo and there's other, mm -hmm. uh, not many drawbacks, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And the, the price uh, is, is a huge Yeah, bonus. it's quite an affordable lens it, it, too, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah. So um, the other reason we haven't actually got the camera on the table in front mm -hmm. of us, the F5, is because it's... It's on my camera. It's camera one, Yeah. <laughs> I guess. So uh, we're just going to work around that, but I don't think it's... A problem that we haven't got the camera and we've got a photo of, of that lens here which is was taken by you as people can see so that's what it actually looks like it's pretty yeah? simple yeah it's just uh, four screws mm -hmm. um, you take it off I will eventually I, I was a bit impetuous when it arrived mm -hmm. uh, quickly changed it over I was so excited uh, mm -hmm. I will probably uh, get some sort of torque screwdriver and just work ah. out uh, what settings that I should do just so that they're all even Evenly, evenly tightened, tightened not up. over yeah. tightened, yeah. and stuff like that. Is there an actual lens element in the adapter, or is it just a, a clear? No, it's just clear. Just clear. So yeah. there's no, no speed boosting. No. Uh, no. Uh, so it's just basically converting the E mount to F Z mount. That's it. So um, what do we got here? You're actually showing us. Okay. Once again, that this demonstration is about you know weights, mm. uh, center of gravity. So look, I. Um, did some tests on my bathroom scales which i know aren't commercial but they're pretty close so this is just a um this just this shot just demonstrates a 2.5 kilogram mm. weight it's fairly close that's two uh two barbell weights stacked on each other so look the scales are out just a little bit yep um but that's our, our reference our calibration mm. if you like for yep. for the rest of this presentation so you actually have the camera now on the scales coming in at 6.5 kilograms what have you got on the camera at the moment Okay, so what I've got on at the moment is the uh, handle, yep. and uh, once again, I've taken the, the Vocus base off because that, mm -hmm. the F5 is actually on a jib, but this would have come off anyhow, so mm -hmm. that's uh, handy for us. So it, it's a pretty uh, standard setup, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a 100 watt hour V-Lock battery on the back, yep. camera mic, and the hand grip. And yep. so that comes in at a nice 6.5 kilograms. So keeping in mind, if we had one of the bigger PL mount lenses, that mm -hmm. would be another two kilograms on, on top of that. Of that. So it'll be uh, 8.5 kilograms. Mm. Every uh, gram counts. That's right. Okay, so center of gravity test. Um, I would normally like to uh, use the map box rail. In mm. this case, uh, because of the shoulder mount, I needed mm. something with a, a broader diameter. So yep. I've used a can of insect repellent, which mm. just happened to <laughs> To be the closest thing when I was taking the photos. Yeah. Um, but what you can see in that shot is the center of gravity is is sort of quite uh, is just under the the main menu knob. Yep. Um, so that's quite interesting. And then mm -hmm. once again, you, if you had uh, two kilograms extra at the front of the camera, that photo would look completely different. You'd have to. You wouldn't be able to balance it that easy because the no. camera would have to sit underneath that rosette over yes, there. Yes, yeah. that's right. So. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, so we'll, we'll move on to the next one. This is where it starts to get more interesting. That is with a 150 watt 
hour battery. So there's mm -hmm. a, a few grams difference, but I just wanted to. So the center of gravity is now moved back. Yeah, a and, bit, oh, and that's another thing I should point out that yeah. um, I've mounted the F5 body mm -hmm. further back. So that's as far back as it will go on, on the that, base yeah. plate. Yep. And that's that's what the game changer. Mm -hmm. So um, okay, so here's another uh, more realistic situation. This is with a 150 watt hour. Mm. VLOC battery and radio mics. Mm. Um, I've got the Sony mm -hmm. uh, adapter for the, the receiver's not in here because we're using it. Mm. Um, but this is a bit more realistic, uh, real world situation. In a reality show or doco style? Pretty much. And the only thing that is missing there would be a time cut, a locket, or there's other. Uh, yeah, uh, tentacle sings or nano lockets, which are tiny and small and, and negligible for weight these grams. days. Exactly. Yeah. But What's interesting here is if you look at the um, center of gravity, that um, can of spray, it's, mm. you know, it's actually now it's under the, the headphone socket. So look, it, it's moved a couple of um, So, so the center of gravity is actually where it should be on the center much. of the shoulder pad, yes. not at the front of the shoulder pad. So what does that equate to in reality? Um, um, comfort. Comfort. Comfort yeah. and being able to concentrate on the real job at hand, not mm. concentrating on the pain on your the shoulder, on the shoulder and, and trying to keep the camera stabilized, you know, mm. so it, it's huge. Mm. Uh, I, I've i done some tests in, uh, you know, around the house and around uh, the streets, but I haven't done a hardcore job on this yet, but mm. that's that's coming. Mm. Um, but once again, you know, this, this is just another, another angle, but once again, a realistic uh, F5 situation where mm. um, you I leave my camera mic on. That's an old digital beta cam camera mic that mm -hmm. I had converted. I tend to just leave that on yep. because I know where it is. Um, mm -hmm. And the the hand or uh, the um, hand grip. Mm -hmm. um, now another interesting thing is in that photo, I actually have the hand grip um, pretty much where I, I would have it for the comfort of my yeah and wrist. it's more on the orientation if you had a servo zoom like the cabrio on it our hands go into it like that so yes. you've got it almost so you yeah. which is comfortable and it's comfortable yeah, yeah um but once again it just keeps getting more and more interesting so mm -hmm. one of the things that i've uh, found you know with using this these super 35 rigs is the um going from handheld mm -hmm. to the tripod to putting the camera back down on to the ground which we have to do sometimes and you might take the camera off the tripod to put it on the ground for safety to adjust or to, the light. To, to adjust the tripod yeah. height you don't want to do it with the camera on no. sometimes no no so once again this is an interesting thing the whole getting onto the set and forget issue mm. here is I, I have the I had the hand uh, grip nice and comfortable there yeah um, and then if you go into the next uh, picture um, that's the camera sitting at, at ground level it's on mm -hmm. the bench but it's at ground level Mm -hmm. um, so I've gone from the handheld to putting it on the ground yep. and I didn't actually have to make any adjustments mm -hmm. to this um, handle, which is interesting. Um, one thing here is the camera um, is possibly just a bit back heavy for this setup. That tripod plate uh, is actually and wedge is actually set up for my XD cam. Mm -hmm. If I was going to run uh, that plate mm -hmm. uh, with the F5, I'd probably just need to shuffle the uh, wedge plate. Yep, so you've still got a little bit of leeway on, on, on the, the tripod balance. slide yeah. plate. Yeah. yeah, so you know, so we've just shot something on the tripod. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have to go. Uh, so you can put it down on down the ground, ground, back to the tripod, or that's another angle on the ground. Th that's right, and, and it doesn't feel like um, it's about to fall over and damage the viewfinder. That I'm, I'm quite comfortable walking mm -hmm. away uh, from the camera there. So I, th this is in very interesting stuff. Yeah, because I did a job the other day with my camera and I had the handle not up here, I had it down here mm. and I couldn't put the thing down. No. And I didn't have any of those shape quick release uh, uh, buttons like I do now mm. because after that experience I go, I can't put the camera down, this is no good. Uh, so, But even still, uh, I had the map box on mine thing so I'm not really sure if I... Was, I haven't done uh, a test with the map box yeah. in, in this scenario. I tend not to use the map box. Yeah unless I have to, yep. um, but the map box is, is another video in itself because there's so many variations of it. That's right. So I've decided for this video, we'll just stay away from the map yeah. box. And it's extra weight. It's extra weight, yeah. Yep. And another thing is some people may point out that I haven't got a um, follow focus. Mm -hmm. I do have one 
I tend not to put it on once again. again unless extra I, weight. Extra weight, unless I need it. And there are mm. times that they're fantastic, but in mm. the general sort of run and gun environment, I, I'm happy to go without. Well, that's good. So what what do you got next here? You've uh, got so to put the camera away. I've got too. to put the camera away. So keeping in mind, so I've just shot something on the tripod. I've just mm. shot some uh, handheld footage. I've had the camera on the ground mm. uh, while I've adjusted lights. Mm -hmm. Talk to the director. Yep. Or whatever, and we're changing location, or I'm going home, and the camera. Uh, once again, with um, this handle, I, I don't have to make any adjustment to, mm. to put it back into the road case. Mm. The only thing that I will have to change here is uh, I will just have to change the foam yep. uh, set up in the. That's it, because it's um, cut, the foam is cut for the mat box rails to sort mm -hmm. of lock in. So that's a little job that I will have to do. But so you'll basically just cut out a, a little bit just so that sort of extension arm can, can just fit drop it in. Yeah. Drop in. Yeah. yeah. Because every time you have to adjust, and I think it, it's time wasted. And if you're in a run and gun situation where the director's calling, quick, quick, you've got to shoot this, or something's happening right mm. now. There's there's a low tolerance for camera guys, uh, you know, adjusting <laughs> the rose head by one notch uh, as the sun's going down, or yeah. someone's about to leave, or yeah. about to lose the talent, or about to go into overtime, or something. Mm. So. Um, so yeah, so we can go and and once again, or this could be a, a location change. Mm. Just push it in and next location, pull it out, pull the right, turn the camera away. on, and the only adjustments then will be you know mm. your filters or because if you're in a hurry too, you might not tighten it up mm. or, or, or that extra turn, no. which might make it. Whoop, That's right, and also, shot. and I this has happened to me as well. I was trying to adjust this once while it was on my shoulder with the mm. front heavy camera and. Yeah. The thread isn't that deep on ah. this, and this actually came off. <gasps> I, I was okay, I grabbed yeah, 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 it, but, yeah, yeah. but the less I have to worry about Exactly, this stuff, that's the whole point. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's really interesting what this lens uh, means to us. Now this is a weird one um, when I was doing the tests in the studio here. Uh, this is a selfie. This mm. is just the, uh, the camera on the 10 second timer. So I was able to set the shot up, press the, uh, the button on the, on the DSLR, run around, and balance it on my shoulder and mm. and it's so neutral I could actually take my hands off. Well that just proves how well balanced that camera with mm. that lens with that handle actually is mm. that you can take your hands away from it. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. I was blown away. I, I don't think I've ever been able to do that on a shoulder mounted yeah. camera. So um, one thing just to be careful, I wouldn't make a habit of, of doing that. Um, mm. the, the weight and I guess it's probably because of the handle um, does tend to just slightly go sideways oh, okay. so you and just got to watch it yeah. Yeah, yeah and i must if there was a variation of or modification of this maybe the the strap that you get say on an eng lens would, ah. would be useful so then it, w it won't fall out because there is a bit of exposure there right yeah yeah it, if you're not concentrating and sure. the camera could go sideways now you've got the focus handle there and i guess you can put anything that works for you and i, I think some of these uh, actually come with triggers as well they do i now regret not getting that model. My, as we do this video, um, my F5 is four years old, mm. and and I remember at the time the price difference between this and the and the one with the the VTR button was mm. substantially more. And I thought, no, I don't need it. It's Super 35. We're in the operating in the film style. Mm. I wished I'd bought it because yeah. I will now probably go and get. <laughs> Yeah, just so you can uh, almost uh, like an ENG server lens, just yeah. hit record. Like and that's used important to. because, like a lot of us, we're going between mm. XD cameras and XD cams or the Panasonics or whatever, between mm. um, uh, so many different cameras. And that is a, a fairly s sort of um, intuitive thing yeah. to do is have the, the record button. Yeah. On that thumb. Yeah, I think there's been a, a lot of blending between the mm. film world and the TV world. The, the distinguished, I mean, we're all using the same gear mm. now, mm. really. Whereas once upon a time, it was film cameras and video cameras, mm -hmm. and never the two shall shall meet. No. But now we're all using the same, you know, sort of super 35 mil cameras, mm. whether it be for, for TV, live reality shows, or dramas. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Absolutely. So a lot of the practices and, and uh, work practices that we're used to as ENG cameramen, we can uh, easily apply to drama or... Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. But what I'm finding is, and we've mentioned this in other media, uh, the videos is um, uh, despite the 
technical revolution, you know, the things don't change. So many mm. things don't change, and that That's is right. people running late, light, mm. people who have to get to the airport, people who have to come from the airport. Mm. All these things are still there, mm. um, no matter what format That's you're true. shooting on. That's true. Uh, but what I uh, really like about this, this new lens, because of its uh, two kilogram uh, weight reduction, it, it changes just a lot of the, um, the bread and mm. butter items. Yeah. So you're more keen now, uh, being able to put that lens on your F5 now, to, to, to use that camera more in a run and gun sort of shoulder Absolutely. I, I'm much more comfortable about it now and, and doing you know longer handheld stints. And once again, mm. I, I did some tests of just how long could I uh, roll on, say, a handheld interview. Mm. And because it's so neutral, mm. you know, the answer is, well, quite a while. I'm not going to define the exact time because some mm. people might think, is he talking an hour? Yeah. I don't want to encourage that type of, uh, <laughs> yeah, but of work. But it, 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 yeah, there's no reason to be doing an interview handheld for an hour. <laughs> no, but you know, sometimes with the, uh, the, the front heavy uh, scenario, mm. um, if you're shooting someone who is shorter than me, mm. You know, then you're sort of holding it down, and then you know, oh, well, if, if you had good. someone who was six foot six, that would be great because that would sort of push it back a bit. But yeah. but this thing is, is so neutral, and and you can sort of trim if you like, um, you know, with your spare hand. If you mm. if you did get um, caught in a long mm. uh, vox pop or or handheld interview, you could pretty much just. Mm. We all have our techniques, but yeah. you could pretty much just you know, the hand that you're not using, just sort of brace your elbow and and combined with the neutrality mm. of this new setup, um, you could actually go for quite a while. Handheld. I'm thinking of a perfect example of doing a red carpet interviews at the Logies, which could go an hour yeah. or more waiting there for each celebrity. You're on the well, it's not shoulder. Just, well, it's not just the that period that you um, are there for the, the one hour or whatever the window is that the people come in. You actually have to get to those events quite early. Yes, you do. And the space that's allocated to each crew is, mm. is quite small and mm. there actually isn't really the space to... Uh, if you put the camera down on the ground, that's mm. an opportunity for the, the camera person to come in <laughs> next to you. There's a there's a few extra centimetres there and he'll, he or she will think, oh, I've got that, that, window. that angle there. And, yeah. and you know, the, they, the celebrities haven't even started arriving yet. So... Mm. In actual fact, those red carpet events that might only go for an hour, you actually got the camera on your shoulder mm. um, a lot longer before that. And, and yeah. with that, you, uh, if it was me, I would be putting the bigger battery on yeah. and you go and have a portable light of some mm. sort. So every, every gram helps, but it when you're sure talking does. kilograms, it's actually quite unbelievable. Mm. So what's the lens actually worth? Uh, Why it's just under a kilogram? Just, I it? believe it's about nine hundred grams. So yeah, it's yeah. just un, under a kilogram. So, so. Yeah, it, compared to a cabrio, it's a kilo and a half worth of weight that you're saving. Yeah. Or more. Yeah. More. And once again, we're not talking those lenses down. I mean, no, they're, they're great lenses. They're sharp. They're, they're beautiful, but they're heavy and they're expensive. Yeah, and expensive to well the damage i mean if this is five thousand aussie dollars mm -hmm. um to buy new you could easily cause five thousand dollars damage mm. to one of those high-end lenses yeah um, if, if something hits the front element of or the you lens. damage the servo or yeah or something um mm. and then of course the other thing these are cheaper to insure mm -hmm. so, right. uh, so it ticks a lot of boxes it does yeah. now the fact uh what's this one open up to this one opens up to 2.9 yes is that a problem for you I think that's pretty good. I yeah. mean, we'd all like it to be faster, but it's not bad. It's, it's better not a than a killer uh, 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 deal, uh, a deal breaker. Deal breaker. No, no, I'm pretty yeah. happy with that because that, once again, is um, comparable to mm. the bigger, more expensive lenses. I think they're about the same. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, what, what's a Cambrio? A, a two three or? I think the Canon is two point T two point nine. Two. Oh, there you go. I think I think yeah. we could very we could better yeah. just follow up on that one to make mm. sure. I apologise if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, and also on the uh, the longer version of this lens, mm -hmm. uh, you can zoom. It's constant. It's path focal. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. But the, you don't sort of have that light drop off at the end. Long ah, end, long end yes. Of the zoom. Like some some zooms actually yeah. after ninety mils will will uh, drop in, mm. in exposure. Yeah. So look, it's early days. Uh, mm. But as I say, in the in the four years that I've had the F5. Um, mm. This is possibly the most interesting development <laughs> in the F5 world, and I'm sure um, other people mm. will, will agree. So what's made it all possible, this Duclos adapter? It is the 
Is it, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Is it Duclo or Duclos? I, I pronounce it uh, Duclos, but I'm yeah. sure we'll get picked up on it. Yeah. Uh, well, they, these guys. We're are, Aussies. We're allowed that's to right. mispronounce That's names. right. Look, these guys <laughs> obviously uh, uh, saw the potential yep. to change it, and they're obviously. I haven't been through their workshops, uh, but I guess they've got the um, the technical know-how and the. Well, they've got a very good equipment. reputation and yeah. name in the industry for yeah, making and uh, lenses and uh, um, iterations of lenses or yeah. rehousings and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And and also with the, the Fuji brand, um, it's important because there is uh, lens snobbery, of course. And, uh, you know, some people go, I want Zeiss or I want, well, it's like, I, sorry, I can't afford them. But I've got no problem telling mm. my client. Mm. Uh, even if it doesn't go on the resolution chart, I'm happy, I'm that confident with the Fuji brand because mm. actually some of those cameras, um, there's some very old Fuji products up the back there. Yeah, in the background of my shot. Um, yep. So I just comfortable knowing it's got the Fujinon brand on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got 4K etched on it. If anyone says to me, what's the story with your lens? Mm. It's, it's a Fuji and it's rated at 4K. Mm -hmm. um, I'm and we're shooting in HD. And we're shooting so, in HD yeah. mostly. Mm. So um, that's that's about that. I think. Yeah. yeah. So uh, an adapter brings uh, a lot of benefits to Super 35mm users on the F, F5 and F55. And ageing cameramen. Yes, we're yeah. not getting any younger. No, no, no. So <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really excited about this. So thank yeah. you, uh, Duclo, Duclos, for yeah. um, making our lives easier. And uh, we'll probably follow up on this yeah. with some demonstration. Yeah. Well, test once footage. once you actually get to use it on a, a job or two, we might come yeah. back and have another discussion of yeah. how you found it. Yeah. Great. All right. Thank you for watching, and catch you on the next video.